For those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Sadia Chowdhury. I am Head of Bio Relations at Connections Luxury. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Connect Talks, Philippines' innovative approach to well-being. So, as we all know, the Philippines, it's a rapidly growing market for wellness travel. There's so much to explore and learn about this exciting destination. For myself, it's been personally fascinating to see how treatments offered at the farm at San Benito combine the latest advancements in medical science with a deep-seated respect for spirituality and traditions. And today, we'll be hearing from three experts in the field. They'll be sharing their perspectives on the wellness industry in the Philippines. And we're then going to get you all involved to share your thoughts with each other in a guided workshop. We've got a lot to get through, so we're going to get underway. Before we get started with the panel, we're going to do a quick poll. We want to get a sense of what your clients request most when it comes to wellness travel. Please could you vote about what do your clients request most when it comes to wellness travel? Are they looking for spa and health facilities? Are they interested in medical practices? Or is it nutrition that's most important to them? Or do they simply want to relax? And how important is sustainability to them? I'm going to give you a minute or so to vote. Are they looking for spa and health facilities? If that's so, please raise your hand. Sam's going to help me do a quick count. OK, perfect. How many of your clients are looking for medical practices when it comes to wellness travel? So slightly fewer. What about nutrition? OK, slightly more. And how many of your clients simply want to get away and relax? And how important is sustainability to your clients? Interesting. Perfect. So I would say that your clients, when they're looking at wellness travel, they're really interested in spa and health facilities, relaxation, and we can definitely see that sustainability is up there on the agenda. And hopefully, after this session, you'll start to learn more about why medical practices and nutrition should also be key to wellness travel when your clients are considering going away. So I'm now thrilled to introduce our keynote speakers. First, we have Dr. Marian Alonso, the medical chief at the farm at San Benito. Dr. Alonso's expertise lies in anthroposophic and integrative medicine, which she uses to promote optimal health among her patients. Dr. Alonso's interest in natural forms of healing began in her childhood after she was diagnosed with a heart condition. However, this diagnosis led her to explore alternative forms of medicine and also the principle of salutogenesis, which focuses on the factors that bring optimal health. Next, we have Renee Rosa Rodrigo. Welcome. Renee is a UK registered master clinical herbalist and founder of O Holiday, a botanical skincare shop and local um, apothecary, there you go, that word, based in Manila. Renee specializes in creating herbal blends that help tackle various health conditions such as endometriosis, menopause, and fertility. She's been offering nutritional and herbal consultations for the past eight years. And last but not least, we have Dr. Quincy, the founder of Rayo Preventative Clinic. Uh -huh. Welcome, Dr. Quincy. She's a highly experienced preventative medical physician with a passion for patient wellness and integrative and nutritional medicine. With over a decade of clinical experience, she's ex she has expertise in men's and women's health 
anti-aging medicine, andrology, and nutritional medicine. She has also graduated from the Leadership in Medicine program of Harvard Medical School in September 2021. So, we're going to have a short Q&A. We'll start with Dr. Alonzo. Dr. Alonzo. Mic test. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Could you please tell us more about the farm at San Benito's approach to wellness and integrative medicine? So the farm at San Benito, we, we first look at what the patient or guest is open to. So for you who have tried, you've seen the wide array of what we can offer because it's very important that we listen to what the patient is asking for. And um, we look, we, we, we diagnose. We want to make sure, and when we diagnose, it's, there's the physical side, there's the psycho-emotional side, there's the habit side of things. And when I say habit, for example, people who are addicted to um, bacon, it's not really the taste of bacon. It's when you really look at it, it's the fact that when they were younger, they did not have to carry so much responsibility. And that's what's making them addicted to certain things. So diagnosis, knowing what we're dealing with is very important before we can offer the other things that we have like, um, detox and repair or healing, which some of you have experienced. Thank you, Dr. Alonso. I think we can all agree that um, over the last couple of days at the farm at San Benito, we've become more aware of the habits that we've formed when it comes to our own nutritional needs. So yes, I do think that's very key. Renee, as a clinical herbalist, could you explain exactly what is clinical herbalism and how it can support clients and patients in their everyday lives? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a UK registered her master herbalist, I'm registered in the UK as a practitioner. So clinical herbalism is something that's new in the Philippines. It's where we take, we look at a thousand years of usage, for example, of herbs and what they have done for your body and what they're used for. For example, something to reduce fevers, something that's an analgesic or a pain reliever. And then we stack those up, those results up, with scientific studies. So clinical herbalism is basically herbal medicine, but in a more scientific setting. And so with clinical herbalists, we're able to diagnose and treat our patients, and we're able to tell them what type of herbs contraindicate if they're on medications already, or sometimes I have patients come in and they're self-medicating from, self from the health food store um, with some type of herb uh, that they found online that supposedly works for them, but it actually doesn't. So it's actually creating more damage in their body. So I'm there to kind of just guide, fix, and bring awareness to herbs and the power of herbs used in medicine. Thank you so much, that's fascinating. And Dr. Quincy. Could you please explain what does preventative medicine entail? How about regenerative medicine? And how does it differ from conventional medicinal approaches? Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to thank Sadia and Sam and the Connections team for welcoming me here. And welcome to this day. So we are very well aware what preventive medicine is. But do we really think about it every day? So preventive medicine is the part of healthcare where we promote disease prevention and disease progression. When we say the disease progression, are we all healthy here? I'm sure some have high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and high cholesterol. We would help you prevent from that condition to progress to blindness, renal failure, or maybe cancer or death. So all of us here together work together in preventive medicine. And what are the diagnostic modalities that we offer? We can do vitamin and mineral toxicity testing. We do food intolerance and allergy testing. And to a certain extent, we do gene sequencing for cancer, cardiovascular disease, and who has good memory here? Dementia, right? And don't be fooled. Some of these tests can be done in resorts. In fact, I work with Lehim Resorts here, and we're doing IV infusions as a treatment modality. We can do biomarker testing in a resort, 
blood sugar, cholesterol, we can test that in resorts. We can test for food allergies in resorts too. And what are other treatment modalities? If ever, there's IV infusion. And we actually also prescribe yoga and meditation. I was just talking to these ladies here because clinical trials say that yoga and meditation, which are incorporated in wellness retreats, are clinically proven to decrease depression and anxiety. So who is anxiety free here? Anxiety free? Amazing. You have and to teach us your secrets. So that is preventive medicine that is applicable in wellness retreats and resorts. What is regenerative medicine? Regenerative medicine is harnessing the body's ability to heal oneself. So for example, if your brother has liver cancer, you can actually donate your own liver stem cells to your brother. It's beyond resorts, but it is something that regenerates, restores function, and renews life. And it is beyond disease management that you can get from hospitals or clinics, although I am a clinician myself. But some of these diagnostic modalities and treatments are easily applicable in clinical settings, in wellness resorts and retreats. Thank you. So what I have, what I've just heard, I think, is and I'm definitely not a medical expert. This is why we have our three keynote speakers here. But what I've understood and what I've learned to appreciate, appreciate about the Philippines as a wellness destination is that there is a very healthy respect for the balance and understanding of the clinical medical approach, but also using things like yoga and nutrition to complement that. And I think that's something that, before I'd spoken to these three um, ladies and experts, I wasn't aware of. Um, so we're now going to take a bit more of a deep dive into how this will apply to our industry specifically. So Dr. Alonso, we've all had the privilege of staying at the farm at San Benito over the last couple of days. Could you explain a little bit more about how the farm started, your journey, started their journey and incorporated wellness as its core offering? So the farm started over 20 years ago, and the idea is really to have healthy human beings living in harmony with nature. So that was the vision of the original owner. He's a German married to a Filipina. The farm used to be a coconut and coffee plantation. And there are people who would be um, trespassing in the resort, not knowing that it's a private property. And it happens so often, and they tend to gravitate to the mango tree, for those who have experienced the mango tree. So the, the German was actually wondering why of the, you know, the hectares of land that he has, why the mango tree? So he flew in some scientists, and they discovered that the, that area is vibrating on a higher level. And all of them said, if this is vibrating on a higher level, healing would be faster, this should be shared to the public. So that's how it started. And then um, as we went along, so original concept was to get people who have cancer, who are, you know, they, the idea was to make the farm the last resort. <laughs> but, you know, again, we're very responsive to what the people are coming in for. So some would be coming to complement conventional medicine. Some would just want to try new experiences that's still related to health. Some would just want to invest on um, their body because they are professional athletes. And that's why um, we, the diagnostics that we have are not available in common hospitals. We invested in um, diagnostics that are, you know, um, when we search normally as medical students, when we search it's the English literature, English medicine. But it turns out there's beautiful breakthroughs in Japanese, Korean, um, French, German medicine. And so the farm invested in, in translators and researchers. And the diagnostics that we have are the ones that are not available in the hospitals. And why is this important? Because a uh, big part of our patients or clients or uh, guests would come in with charts this thick. 
they would feel something's wrong with them, but all the tests are normal, and they are judged as a mental case. But they know they're mentally stable, but they just don't know what's wrong with them. And that's why the diagnostics that we have are very sensitive. Uh, years before an actual disease can happen, we can already prevent if we know these things. Thank you. And if you haven't experienced the healing power of the mango tree, I invite you to go down there and experience the really, really, truly positive vibrations that it um, gives. Set some good intentions and you'll see your life flourish, I'm sure. So, Renee, what would your advice be to luxury travel agencies and um, resorts on how to incorporate herbal medicine into their off offerings? And how can they engage with their clients to raise the awareness of the benefits? Okay, so for herbal medicine, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I think we all know why. <laughs> so even in the Philippines, it's also a tricky and a sensitive topic. Uh, so what I encourage uh, travel agencies to do is to really look at tea. So tea is one of the most widely consumed beverages across the globe. But what you find in your tea bags is actually what we call tea dust. There's actually no medicinal benefit to a tea steep of, a, of one that's packed in your store, in your local store, or your Whole Foods, or your health food store. There's not enough medicinal benefits there. Even if you got a sleep tea, and then I have a patient come to me, and they're like, I have this sleep tea, but I can't sleep still, it's because it's not going to work for you. Uh, real medicinal tea is loose leaf tea, full herbs, dried, properly um, in a proper manufacturing facility for herbs. And so actually we are opening, my, I'm opening my second apothecary this June 15 at Shangri-La Hotel BGC in the Fort in Manila. And um, so what we are doing is we are going to be offering tea, medicinal tea, herbal tea, proper herbal tea, to their clients and their visitors and their guests. And this is really, really effective because, you know, we have guests coming from all over the world and a lot of you raised your hand saying that your clients want relaxation. I have an herb for that. <laughs> so they could come have a, tea, a, a, a cup of tea with herbs for general relaxation. Or if they wanted to consult for something a little bit more serious, they could consult with the in-house herbalist, which is, I'm actually the only one currently in the Philippines that I know of. I don't know if the ladies here know of any other. So um, that would be me. So they can incorporate these types of things into their, into their hotels or into their resorts. It's really easy actually to package a tea. And then for travel agents or for tours and things like that, I was just in Korea last week and it was so interesting because we went on this tour and we had no idea that they were going to bring us to this like Korean ginseng facility and then they also brought us to this red pine oil facility where the government actually, I think, subsidized, subsidized this place and uh, they promote and they sell their Korean ginseng and their red pine oil. They're very proud of these products as a country. Um, in the Philippines, however, uh, we're still learning. We're still learning as a country because we do have lots of stigma with alternative healing methods. And so in the Philippines, what you can do is go to clinics or resorts like the farm. You can go to the Raya Clinic for things like hyperbaric chamber, which I stick my son in there when he's sick. And or you can come to my shop for some herbal teas and herbal remedies. So I think it's really important to incorporate these into tours. Um, I was so fascinated with the Korean ginseng. I think I really spent a thousand dollars on ginseng. My husband's in the back there. He's like, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> so it's really effective too. I know where I'm going when I'm next in Manila. I'll be coming to your shop. Yes. So, Dr. Quincy, just very shortly and briefly, because we are slightly running it over, given the past few years, I'm sure you've seen an increased interest in preventative and regenerative treatments. But how have you seen this reflected in your practice? Patients are very well aware and proactive about taking care of their health in a preventive manner. But it goes without saying that it's not complete to go to your doctor. A huge part of the treatment is the role of the patient themselves. So a lot of patients are proactive in asking about how do I do proper supplementation, including 
herbal treatment? What is hyperbaric oxygen chamber therapy? What, is, what are IV infusions? What are cellular therapies that can help treat or prevent damage of my knees? So I've seen that, especially with post-COVID, people are more well aware, more active that I need to be healthy to address disease, to address stressors. And in fact, most of them know that stress management is a part of, the tre of treatment in preventive medicine. And I know we're short in time, but I'll just tell you a quick story about a patient and a vacation in the Caribbean. I had a patient, 55 years old, male, came in with chest pain. We thought he was having a heart attack, but all the cardiologists said, he's not having a heart attack. His angiogram is negative, but his cortisol or stress hormones were high, inflammatory markers were high, and I said, you know what? You need a vacation. So he took a two-week vacation in the Caribbean, came back, and all his results were normal. But of course, I was the doctor who prescribed that, <laughs> right? But we did see that his inflammatory markers all became normal after a two-week vacation in the Caribbean. It's not the only prescription, but relaxation is a prescription for stress management and better health. Thank you. I think I need to find myself a doctor who'll prescribe holidays <laughs> as medicine. Right, so now we're going to dive into the workshop session. This is where you're all going to get involved. In front of you, you should have a piece of paper telling you which group you're part of. So, Renee will be leading group one. Dr. Alonso will be looking after group three. And Dr. Quincy will be looking after group two. I did that in a wrong order. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know my one, two, three. Anyway, so please make your way to whichever group that you're in. Please have a look for Sam and Alicia. They will um, guide you to where you need to be. Sam will be looking after group one. Alicia will be looking after group three. And I will be looking after group two and you'll be answering some questions and having a discussion. So please make your way to either Sam or Alicia or myself. Okay, I'll try. Uh, okay, for our group, we came up with different uh, propositions. One of them is the size of the spa, uh, because it's very important for the client, depending on everything they got to offer. Uh, also, the information that the client gives to us and what we can know from the same facilities in order to present all the, um, the opportunities to the different clients that we may have. Uh, lack of awareness because again for the information how we can get more information from the facility in order to uh, be able to bring the right clients to the right type of uh, wellness center uh, perception of medical problems uh, how can the doctors uh, in so quick time uh, be perceptive of what each individual client have in so little time need of a specific specialist. So how do we know in advance what kind of information every different wellness center have in order to provide that information for our client and send them again to the right I think your minute's up. <laughs> how we can do the same if somebody in the group wants vacation, the other one is wellness, how we can put it all together to get the right on a type of trip and for the last uh, wellness versus beauty. If mean, it's really about wellness or it's really about beauty, or both together can be combined and have a great time when you are doing once or two weeks vacation period. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ennio. <laughs> Laura, could I please ask your group to present at the front? Who's your chosen? Oh, sorry, Alicia. Would you be able to present? 
So our group was asked to answer the question, what do you see as the future of wellness needs of your clients to the Philippines? And how can we adapt as a private sector to these growing demands? So a lot of uh, the answers that really focused on um, the clients would really want relaxation and um, uh, they would always want to travel with uh, in mind that they are getting personalized care or bespoke wellness services or treatments and um, availing of state of the art and state of the state of the science, medical health uh, and facilities, as well as um, it's more, more itinerary based rather than just focused on service. So clients will usually look for a journey. So coming into wellness, it's more of starting with, a, with, with, uh, with, a, with an issue or a problem and then ending with, with a goal that is, has been achieved. So it's more of a bespoke uh, kind of thing. So uh, as private sector, um, the thing that most uh, Your time was mentioned is to be up. done is to promote well-being, healthy lifestyle, sustainable we services, are very strict. and client education. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm now going to invite Renee's group, group one, to share their findings in one minute or less. So, hi. We know the topic already. To me, the strangest part is the difference between what the suppliers are offering and everything else that we're looking at. Spiritual elevation. I know. Anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better energy levels, everyone. Sexual seminar, of course, yes. A detox, fitness, aesthetic improvements. I think this is pretty much on the menu of, of most of the, of the hotels that we work with. But on the contrary, the suppliers are focused on government support programs, uh, training, education, and collaboration and partnerships with wellness companies. Now, I think there's work to be done between matching both so that when we're actually collaborated, that's when we also get this sorted. Great. That's us. Perfect. Thank you. And you came in under. Please, may I invite the panelists to join the stage? Sam, please right, so we are going to shortly let you go to lunch, but just before we do, I'm going to invite the panelists to share their closing thoughts. Like how long? It's going to be a one word answer. <laughs> I'm now setting the bar very high. So, okay, I'll give you one sentence. And it's a sh it needs to be a short sentence. What do you see as the future of wellness tourism in the Philippines? Okay. Who would like to start? Is that gonna be Renee is going to start. I, I already know my words. Learning and awareness, 100%. Perfect. Dr. Quincy? Dr. We have Dr. Alonzo's response. Okay. Alignment to that part of you which is uncorrupted by disease or the drama in life. <laughs> Those are wise words. And Dr. Quincy. What I see is a healthy collaboration between suppliers, wellness resorts, and definitely the government departments of health, tourism, transportation, such that they bridge the gap in governance, transportation, policies, and infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you very, very much to our three plan panelists. Please, can we give them a huge round of applause? We are very lucky that they'll be able to spend a little bit of time with you over lunch. So if you'd like to have a discussion with them, then please feel free to share your thoughts and your feedback and also to pick their brains on their expertise.